In this today's video, I'll teach you how you can create this kind of a scene inside of Unreal Engine 5.5.1 and this will be a very easy technique which you can create easily and this is completely beginner friendly video. So hopefully you guys will love this tutorial a lot. Make sure subscribe and hit the bell icon to get all the notifications instantly whenever I upload the video. Currently we are in Unreal Engine as you can see this is the scene. So let's reset this. So go to file then new level and I'll just make an empty level. So just press create. So I have this assembly folder over here. Uh, you can find out this assembly folder inside of a preset pack which is called electric level pack which you can use for all these blueprints. Now how you can import all these blueprints also how you can migrate this I have already shown in my previous video you can watch this video I just put this video link in my description also you can find out top of the corner in the i button So yes we are using this asset to create this scene So firstly we need to get our environment so go to windows and then environment light and mixer and then let's create everything by pressing all these options now going down you can find it's called volumetric fog simply turn this on and close it all right now we need to get our floor where we want to generate the foliages so here i am not creating any landscape because we are creating a very small amount of area so going down you can find such kind of an uh, ground assets over here so if you just control and zoom you can find these many assets so here you can find this called bpp assembly the jungle ground so I'm just using this simply drag and drop and in the first time it will take some time and you can find it here. So this is a floor which is basically uh, based on the forest. So what I'll do, I'll just select all the lights and make it in a folder so that it will easily accessible. Now by pressing Ctrl and D you can duplicate this and also you can rotate this environment. Also you can call this as a ground. Now I just want to increase the shape slightly. And in the same way, you can duplicate this in a multiple time so that you can create a vast ground by pressing Ctrl D once again and again just rotate it like this. So once you create your ground asset, I just want to add few ground assets more to make some more variations. So once you're happy with your scene, let's cover the entire scene with a large number of assets. So before doing that, I just want to give my camera something like this so that we are not uh, focusing on unwanted areas so let's see this is our main camera angle so i'll just create a level sequence so click here add level sequence and make sure you have to save this project so first of all just simply press here save and go to content I'll, I'll just create a new folder and name it tutorial and after inside of this folder i'll just name it like a map so that this will be our map and let's save this and after that go to level sequence add level sequence and in the same folder i'll just make this new level sequence and here you can find this camera button simply click the camera will create now here i want the camera should little different so just simply select the access camera and uh, let's select this dslr and here i'm just want a little wide angle so what i'll do i'll just go to universal zoom to 12 millimeter so we have some wide angle shot like this. Now I'll just go back to our camera view and uh, you can see the camera is right here. So just let's pin it so that always you can see the camera. So to cover the entire area, I'm using this river embankment cover area. So simply drag and drop. Now this is very large asset as you can see. Just reset the positions and once you rotate, it can see like this right here. So I'm just pushing it a little fur because I'm going to increase the shape pretty high because this is a large scale of model which exactly placed very very far okay so let's make it little backside also a little bit in center now i just want to change the lighting directions so that you can see entire scene like this so from this camera view you can't understand that this is actually very far from our base ground if you notice there's a base ground in the middle there is nothing and that's at this acid it's exactly pretty pretty far okay so in the using the same asset what i'll do i'll just press alt and duplicate and i'll just rotate this and i'll just increase the shape slightly so that i can cover this area just little put it down the same asset just copying it here and i'm just increasing the shape slight bigger 
and I'll just rotate this. That's it, pushing it down. So now you can see the sky right from here. Also, you can see the ground. Now, to bounce the light, I'll just duplicate this once again and pushing it in the back. So for this reason, the light will cover the entire area. So now if I notice, this area should be covered the light. All right, we have done successfully. So now let's work on the lighting first, then we'll come the foliages department. So let's, let's select all these assets and uh, move it in a new folder. So this new folder is for the asset and this is for the lighting. So firstly, I'll just turn off all the lights uh, and just turn on this exponential height and fog. I'll come to later. Now go here and then light and you can find this HDRI backdrop. Simply select this and you can find this HDRI right here. Now if you want, you can just push it down a little bit slightly like this and go to this geometry and you can find this environmental dome. Simply type sky and you can find this called sky sphere. Simply select the static mesh and automatically if you notice the environment is applied right over here. If you just turn off this exponential height and fog, you can see this is basically a sphere. Let's increase the size of this HDRI. So let's say 2500 and let's intensity to let's say three or let's say two. All right. And now let's change the HDRI. So I'm just browsing it here. So it will directly jump into our HDRI folder. And here I have a lot of HDRIs. I'm just going to use this HDRI, simply drag and drop, and it can create a really good cinematic forest lighting. And uh, if you want, you can rotate this lighting as well because you can't see anything from this angle. So what I'll do, I'll just rotate this so that I can see some forest areas right from here. Pretty cool, right? This already start looking some naturalistic light, but we don't want to use entirely an HDRI. We're going to use a little bit of directional light. So to moving forward, I'm just going to generate some foliages right over here. But before doing that, simply select the skylight and make sure select this specified cube map and the same should be here. All right. Once you're happy, let's add some trees over here using the foliages system. Also, you can just simply copy and paste the trees so that it can easily create. So now let's go to this foliages section and simply go to foliages and you can import the trees right from here. Simply select the oak tree and once you just click, it can automatically generate one tree over here. So I'll just generate some random trees. So let's add few foliages in front of your scene. So simply drag and drop and just push it here. I have done only this much area. Now let's work on the lighting as I told that I want to use the directional light. Also just turn on the environmental height and fog. Simply turn this on and let's jump into our camera view. Simply click perspective and cinematic camera. So this is our camera view. Now after turning on the exponential height and fog, simply turn on the directional light and you can see suddenly it's a boom. It's a big change. Now pressing control and L, you can exactly rotate the light and push the light somewhere here so that it can create some volumetric fogs or lighting. Now simply select the exponential height and fog and before doing anything, just uh, simply add a post-process volume so that it can control the exposure. Simply type infinite bound, turn this on and turn on the bloom effect. Going down, you can find this called exposure. Simply turn this to and this should turn on as well and type exposure and turn this to and turn this to and make sure it should one by one. So you have locked the exposure. You can increase the exposure from here by holding the control. You can do it very smoothly. Select the directional light. Let's rotate the direction slightly so that it can easily adjust with our scene slightly in this section. And that's good. Now select this exponential height and fog going down. You can find this called extraction scale. Once you increase, you can exactly increase the exponential height and fog in background. And uh, if you decrease the view distance, it can decrease the fogginess in the background. Simple. Also, you can increase the near fade out so that there will be no fog in front of you. And going up, you can find this called fog density, make it to 0.1 so that you can see a dense fog in background. Also go to this directional light and you can simply increase the source angle to get some soft lights as well. Now simply direct uh, that intensity, let's make it to, uh, let's say 0.5. So it's getting a darker scene, like, you know, that uh, kind of a forest, which is a little darker. 
Also, you can simply select this HDRI backdrop and decrease the intensity to 1 from 2. So also it can decrease the lighting as well. So I have added the light in 5 so that it can easily continue with our scene. So I have changed the lighting directions so that also it can manage with our scene as well. Alright, now click this post process volume and going down you can find a lot of options called camera and going down you can find this called image effect simply turn this on and once you increase you can see some dark edges from the side areas and going down also you can find called global saturations and the contrast simply increase the contrast slightly and the global saturation should down a little bit so let's say this much and here you can find this called gain I'm just going to increase the gain slightly and you can find this called shadow contrast simply increase the contrast in the shadow area so it can create a little bit of punchy effect now select the cine camera actor going up you can find this called depth of field simply turn this on to understand where you focus exactly now simply decrease the focus so i just want the focus should be here and turn this off now if you decrease the current aperture it can be decreased under 2.8 but to make it more you can simply minimum f stops to zero and you can now decrease it to let's say 0.5 so you can find out little blurry effect now if you notice the blurs are little bit uh, punchy so what you can do simply select here and type r dot and then temporal upscaling and temporal and you can find call upscaling simply select space and then space zero and press enter so now this can automatically fix your uh, depth of field issue if you find out as well now i'm just decreasing the focal length little more to let's say 0.1 so it can create a shallow depth of field but for this scene 0.35 is pretty decent so now go to the sequencer select the camera in the camera actor simply select this to transform first frame go to animation and the last frame so you can just push the camera slightly i'm just decreasing the camera speed and just i'm pushing it a little like this and click the camera here and once you play you can find out this camera animation select all right click and then linear and that's it you are good to go that's it for today i hope you really enjoyed this video share like comment share and make sure to subscribe to our channel world of vfx see you next time with some more amazing new content till keep rocking keep watching bye bye